I got a fiery flaming sword, hot off the iron, ready to swing left and right. Let's go. Let's go. I gotta let you in on a little secret. <clears throat> Don't let me forget to let you in on a little secret. Let's go. <clears throat> Caveman is lifted up with great pride, riding on a proverbial high horse, a red dragon. Proud as hell, too. We gonna get it. <clears throat> we gonna get it. Yep. Haven't been live on this channel in a long time. Let's get it. That's right. Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> the games are almost up. We got to look up, brothers. For our, rede our redemption draweth nigh. <clears throat> look up. I will look to the hills from which cometh our help. Let's go. Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. Don't intend to make this long. Shalom, beloved. Barack Thumb. Let me make a couple of moderators real quick. Then we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Well, I haven't been on this channel in a while, so quite a few moderators. <clears throat> All right, let me go ahead and jump into it. Shalom, Barack, Barack Atham. Shalom, Barack Atayahawa. Barack Atayahawa Shai. Barack Atayahawa. Barakatha Yahweh Shai. Call Halayla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rakakadash. All praises be to the Most High Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, reading with spiritual comprehension. Reading with spiritual comprehension. <laughs> so I want to go into something This is very, very spiritual and very significant. Yesterday I was chatting with Elder Karataza out of Las Vegas. And he did a little short video on the earthquake that took place in Turkey. 12,000 and counting are deceased, unalive. So the reason that I want to go into this is it's a beautiful segue into the lesson tonight. Heart technology. If somebody can put a definition on the comment board, heart technology. I think it's H-A-A-R-P, heart technology. So we're living in a time where warfare has been fundamentally change. No longer are we going to see large troop formations in battle array, in formation together in the open field. They would just be annihilated by rockets, missiles, artillery, and aerial drones. Modern warfare has been fundamentally changed. The next war 
will be over in 10 days. Why you think the Bible says, be thou faithful 10 days? There's not going to be a four or five year drawn out war anymore. With the weaponry that we have today, warfare is going to be asymmetric. What do I mean by asymmetric? Cyber, bio warfare, chemical warfare, nuclear warfare. So those that are going to survive, it's going to be by spiritual intervention, the most highs elect, <coughs> or preserved from the underground bunkers, the remnant that are going to be salvaged to go into slavery. The elite of Amalek, the international bankers, followed by the other kings of the earth under him. So warfare has changed on how we fight. So now you can strike a opposing nation with heart technology to create an earthquake effect. And you can attack them from aerial drones. You can also put them in the dark with an electromagnetic pulse weapon or EMP, the water beloved Malak, heart. Yeah, H-A-A-R-P, HARP, initiated as an ionospheric research program, jointly funded by the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Navy, the University of Alaska at Fairbanks, and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Now we have what? DARPA. DARPA, somebody put that definition as well. They're creating super soldiers, advanced robotics. The next war will not last one year, four years, 20 years, no more. It's going to be over in about a week and a half or approximately 10 days. Yep. Brother GMS Debar Kabash, <clears throat> Isaiah 9, verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Rocket fuel that ignites, ignites, and turns an entire city into a boiling pot of fire. No more large troop formations in the open. That's suicide. Are you crazy? You're not going to see a large formation of troops anymore. Nations are going to be hit with electromagnetic pulse weapons, bio-warfare weapons, cyber attack weapons to take out your computer network where you can't talk. You can't communicate or consolidate or organize. Brother GMS Debar Kabash, DARPA, D-A-R-P-A, -A, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense, responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military, robots, see, laser precision guided aerial drones, see, you try to go into the open and attack a nation nowadays, like they did 50 years ago, or 60 years ago, you're going to be roasted toast, so why are we going into this, earthquakes can be man-made as well, so, Yahabashai was also talking about man-made weapons in diverse places. Yes, we have natural earthquakes. There's multiple reports that the earthquake in Turkey could have potentially, be, potentially have been initiated by, by HARP, by the HARP system. Now, it's still... <laughs> It's still the most high controlling that. On the left-hand side, 
Somebody post Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. So the Most High con controls heart or DARPA. Wisdom of Solomon 12 and 1. Revelation 4 and 11. Please. Revelation 4 and 11. So earthquakes in diverse places can also be stimulated or initiated by man-made technological devices, which are still controlled by the Most High through his left hand, which is Esau Edom. See, Brother Gabar, Brother GMS, Gabar Kabash. Wisdom of Solomon 12, verse 1. For thine incorruptible spirit is in all things. See, somebody post that, I create the smith that blow up the coals in the fire. So his incorruptible spirit is in every element. Air, wind, fire, uranium, mercury, copper, iron, steel. See, mercury. He controls the elements. Brother Andre serving in Hawashai and Brother GMS Debar Kabash. Isaiah 54, verse 16. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. See? So the instruments of the weapons of mass destruction are owned, created, and manipulated by the spiritual force that drives them, which is the left-hand side, spiritual demon under Satan or the spiritual demon Satan, and the minions under him, which are the Edomites. Let's read that again. Isaiah 54, verse 16. <clears throat> Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the fire, and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I have created the waster to destroy so the Lord is the creator of all elements and the instrument to destroy. His instrument to destroy, somebody post Psalms 17 and 13. Psalms 17 and 13. So the Lord created a sword on the left-hand side, the great red horse or the great red dragon, the Edomites. They're operating under the frequency of the spiritual demon Satan, the dragon. See, let's go to Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Well, let's get that sword first. On the left-hand side, it's Esau Edom, a so-called white man. Brother GMS Debar Kabash. Psalm 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, Cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So you have an instrument of death. The Edomites, they are a left-hand side tool of the Most High. A sword created for the evildoers. Beautiful. Brother Ariyah Cha'ayah, Revelation 13. I'm about to get that next. That's on my list. So the Edomites are the minions under the dragon or this global system, the revised Roman Empire. Why well, you think they made that cartoon minions? Those are little Edomites causing mischief. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard and his feet as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So the Edomites came into power under Alexander the Freak, the leopard, 
and his feet as the feet of a bear. The N is Gog and Magog, the great bear. When they begin to clash and fight east against the west, which is the beast or NATO, the European Union, America. So the beat, the bear, represents the end, the feet, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. That's out of London. The international bankers, where their kings rule the world from, the international elite, particularly the Rothschilds. That mouth is their policy. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. What is that dragon? <coughs> We're going to get it. See? And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast, and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Revelation 6 and 4. So that power is their military might. The sword is the blessing of the caveman. He was blessed with the ability to shed a insatiable amount of blood. So he was blessed with the ability to take peace from the earth. The caveman does not hate blood. Blood is going to pursue these cave beasts. So he's blessed with the ability to cut your life short. Deliver me, O Lord from the wicked, which is thy sword, the great red horse. Where's that red horse at? So this man blessing is bloodshed. He is the mystery of iniquity. So that power is the power to take peace and life from the earth. Weaponry, laser-guided munitions, laser-guided munitions, heart system, DARPA, Aerial drones, cyber warfare, bio warfare. Revelation 13 and 4. And they worshiped the dragon, which gave power. <coughs> and they worshiped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Let's go into his power. This gets into their technology. See? Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So Isaac gave him his power. Isaac gave him the sword, the blessing of the sword. So only Isaac, which is coming back as Yahweh Shai, can take him out of the way. I know you see that. See? 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So Yahweh Shai has to take this devil down. Not you with your little nine mil. Talking about pew, pew, pew. Your slow belly butt's going to be consumed in fire from aerial drones. Turned into a black roast. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So the Lord is prophesied to take down this animal. It takes spiritual intervention to take out advanced weapon systems, robots, aerial drones, harper. 
See? Let's get that power. We about to get that power of the dragon. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So they can create catastrophic events, electromagnetic pulse, earthquakes in diverse places. That's that power. Let's go back to the dragon. Revelation 13, verse 2. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Let's go back to this power. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So they have a sword on steroids, nuclear weapons, radiation weapons, sound weapons that they can turn on a frequency and make you melt from the inside out. So all your organs begin to melt. Or high frequency sound weapons. See? 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 10. With all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. What is the difference between wars and rumors of wars now compared to throughout history? It's the change in technology which leads to the CHIP, the MOTB. So I'm a wanna bond, there's always been wars. There's always been rumors of wars. There's always been earthquakes. So the difference is the technology the technological advances, the emergence of a totalitarian technocracy. The emergence of a totalitarian technocracy. That's the difference. It's the technology. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. So many people trust in this man. They trust in his medicine. They trust in his advanced military weaponry. They trust in his science. They trust in his pseudoscience and his juice. Many of them are already juiced up on the caveman's his tonic. So the Lord has to intervene and raise up his battle axe, the men of the house of David. So the masses are going to perish that trust in him. They're going to see the miracles, the signs, and aesthetic arm, being able to move your robotic arm, being able to see when you cannot see, given the technology that opens your eyes, the brain implant, giving you the ability to read a 10,000 page document in one hour. So lion signs and wonders given to him by the dragon. So this power rests in his ability to manipulate the mind, the body through his technology. Is pseudoscience. See? Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. That's the marker of the difference from the ages or the eons of time giving you a device 
that can be implanted into your mind, giving you a device that can make you walk when you could not walk, that can make you move a robotic arm or a robotic leg, that can make you meditate, excuse me, levitate off your feet with this technology. They're going to link you into the Bluetooth technology where you can levitate, where you can see now. You can walk and get up out of your wheelchair. You were a paraplegic. Now you can levitate, fly, run, see? Lion signs and wonders, miracles on the left-hand side. Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. How does the beast speak? Let's go back to it. Revelation 13, verse 2. And the beast, which I saw, was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So they're speaking through the United Nations policies, the world economic, you know, provisions. So they're getting their backing by their military might and their advanced technology, advanced modern warfare. So the mouth of them comes from the global elite whose headquarters is in London. That's the mouth of the dragon. They're policy makers of this one world governing system. It's the policy makers and holders of the universal law on the left-hand side, the international bankers, the global elite, and they use their military to enforce or reinforce what you refuse. That's why the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. So he backs up his policy with his hammer, a hammer of the earth. Let's go back to that. Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So he backs it up with his military might, his troops. And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Let's get the definition of that mark on the comment board, please. The karagma, lion signs, wonders, science, medicine, technology. So their doctrine is based on the physical world, the physical universe. It's not a spiritual ability to have eternal life, but they're utilizing the elements in the physical world to try to create what they were not blessed or given from the spiritual realm. So their sword backs up their policy or their mouth, speaking great words or swelling words, blasphemies. So they're going to use a physical mark to try to achieve a spiritual objective, eternal life, longevity, see, healing, medicine, strength. How many remember the $6 million man or the $1 million man? I used to watch it. He was a, a man that had supernatural abilities, robotic strength, similar to the movie RoboCop. I think it was called the Billion Dollar Man or the Million Dollar Man that I watched as a young boy. So he's trying to achieve a spiritual blessing 
through a physical means in a chip. And he calls them all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Elon Musk, look him up. The $6 million man, the water brother. So he had electronic and robotic capabilities. He could run as fast as a moving vehicle. They create these in the movies. Like Superman can leap one tall building with one great giant leap. Like the mighty men of King David. So the caveman was not given the spiritual blessing of eternal life. He was not given the gift of supernatural abilities. Mighty men. So he's making synthetic strength. Synthetic intelligence. Artificial intelligence. See, micro technology. I can't use the other word. They'll take down the video, devil. Let's look up this word, karagma. Out of beloved brother, Bayan Yasharala. Karagma. A stamp. An imprinted mark of mark stamped on the forehead or the right hand as the badge of the followers of the anti hamashiach Branded. So you're being branded or stamped by the devil to mark you as a slave. The Romans used this marking system. I think it was called RVSP or something like that. I'd have to look up the Latin meaning of it. So it is a branding mark to mark your slaves. Now they want to take it a step further and make it sub- Thermal, subdermal, under the surface of the skin. See, let's go to Matthew 24. So Hamashiach Yehoshai was speaking about what? That is a signature mark of the last days. He's speaking about a technocracy, man-made earthquakes, man-made miracles, man-made signs and wonders or lying wonders. He was speaking about science, these false prophets, which is mainly Esau. He is the main anti-Hamashiach, but he has underlings of the two-thirds of the house of Israel, the house of Saul. See, Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Hamashiachs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. He was speaking about the technocracy, the aerial drones, the heart weather manipulation devices. See? Earthquakes in weird diverse places which also can cre be created by missiles or the heart system. See what we got here. So this is how he causes all that will not bow down to a system to be killed. It's backed up by a large hammer. Their military might. Why you think the ancient, what you call those Nordic, the Nordic people from that area of uh, England, Scotland, or the Nordic people worship who? Thor, who had a great hammer. They worship a pagan god called Thor, the hammer of the earth, their military might, their sword. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Somebody put the definition of wonders. Yeah, the hell, the hell with Thor. A caveman with long blonde hair, blue eyes, and carrying the damn a caveman's club bugged out. Let's get the definition of wonders, Bubba Kasha. So being branded with his stamp, an imprinted mark. They even have a digital tattoo that you can get. It can be scanned. 
and it can be placed under the surface of the skin or subdermal. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false mashiachs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So the elect are not going to be deceived by his wonders. Yet wonders, admiration, something beautiful, unexpected, unfamiliar, or inexplicable. So these are miracles, like a paraplegic man walking. Let's go to Matthew 24, verse 7. Matthew 24, verse 7. <clears throat> Notice signs. So that man of sin has been revealed that is the author of this confusion. These weapons, the great sword, the nuclear missile technology. See? So he is the author of this confusion. The man of sin being revealed is a signature mark that we're in the last days. Now he needs forceful compliance to accept his branding, his implants, his imprints, because he's been identified. Every criminal comes from the word crimson, red, see, the red man, the red beast, the red horse in Revelation 6 and 4. Need an escape plan. This is his escape plan, his out. How does he get out without being punished, captured, destroyed? Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So you can, ev you can even execute a pestilence by man-made bioweapons, biohazards that are being released in the air. You can execute a man-made pestilence. You can initiate a man-made earthquake by heart systems and these miss missiles, particularly nuclear missiles, in diverse places, places that are not known to be sitting on a fault or a fault line. Places that are not known to have a history of earthquakes. So they're not known for having these type of catastrophic events. Yeah, chemical trails, that's right. Chemical trails can cause disease or pestilence. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Famine or food shortages are being engineered. Killing off cattle and livestock. Contaminating the air and the water. See? So these are man-made devices of Satan. We're not ignorant of Satan's devices. So Yahweh Shai has to take this devil out. Not D-Rock down the street with his Glock shooting sideways. It's not going to work. See? Let's go to 2 Ezra 8 and 26. 2 Ezra 8 and 26. O look not upon the sins of thy people but on them which serve thee in truth. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction, resisting the sea hip, resisting the mot bee, resisting the serpent's piss, or the serpent's tonic. See? So the elect are a said number that have been sealed, that have been preserved, are they going to resist the temptations of the devil? 
that's going to come upon all the world. 2 Ezra 8, verse 26. O look not upon the sins of thy people, but on them which serve thee in truth. Regard not the wicked inventions of the heathen, but the desire of those that keep thy testimonies in affliction. Think not upon those that have walked vainly before thee, but remember them which according to thy will have known thy fear. Remember your elect chosen before the foundation of the world. Second Ezra 8, Second Ezra 8 and 29. Let it not be thy will to destroy them which have lived like beasts, but to look upon them that have clearly taught thy law. So remember mercy in the day of thy wrath, who's teaching and preaching the word, who's helping to edify the body and feed the lambs in truth and sincerity, not many false prophets or many false anointeds that shall come in his name that are not sincere. Second Ezra 8, verse 30. Take thou no indignation at them which are deemed worse than beasts, but love them that always put their trust in thy righteousness and glory. So the elect are faithful servants. Brother GMS Facts, Word 144, Shalom, Barakatha, Revelation 14 and 11. And the smoke, let's go up. Those that take this man's stamp or his print. What if your woman got imprinted by another man and moved her limit of advance further back? You would be pissed off. You don't want that woman. She's defiled. She's already had her imprint moved back further than you. Hells to the nizzo. So this man's stamp or his mark shows a, an allegiance to him and not the most high. Revelation 14 and 11, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So your master's name would be Esau Edom. He is that man of sin, the son of perdition. He is the reincarnated Roman Caesar, the reincarnated Pharaoh. See, let's go to 2 Ezra 13 before we do. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai. 2 Ezra, where is it at? Yeah, a lot of these pestilence, food shortages, earthquakes, and disease and wars, man-made by that man of sin, the son of perdition. Earthquakes in diverse places. Yeah, we still have natural earthquakes as well. Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, 2nd Ezra 16 and 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions. Let's read that again. Brother Andre serving in Habashai. Second Ezra 16. Let's go to verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions and what ye think in your hearts. Even them that sin and that would hide their sin. Therefore hath the Lord exactly searched out all your works, and he will put you all to shame. And he's going to do that by the flame. You're going to be rebuked with his fiery flames of rebuke, plagues of fire. So the Lord is going to create a pestilence or a plague of fire. See, let's read about it. Second Ezra 13. We'll get ready to close out here. Second Ezra 13, verse 36. 
and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. So that tempest is fire mixed with storm and rain, wind. That's the whirlwind, <laughs> which is going to be finished off with the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. So the Lord has to take this devil out of the way. Let's go back to that. Second Ezra 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, the prophets, and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The whirlwind, or the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Technology, technocracy, advanced military weaponry. See, so the Lord has to take this red animal down. Not the NAA, or what is the NFAT, the not effing around crew. They're, most of them are in jail or on damn government assistance. So how can he, in fact, take down this devil? Second Ezra 13 and 36. And Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. He's coming back with that fathership. That's the hill graven without hands. A great fathership. Yeah, the infect is like a damn little gnat flying around Esau, this great red dragon. You'll just be crushed and smashed. Second Ezra 13 and 37. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into tempest. The lake of fire is how that tempest is going to end. Second Ezra 13 and 38. And shall lay before them their ephah. <coughs> Second Ezra 13 and 38. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame, and he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me. So they're being consumed by the spirit of the Lord's mouth. The mouthpiece of the Lord are his prophets. That's the word of the law that they're being destroyed with first which leads to fire coming down from heaven. Did not the, big, the great prophet Elijah cause fire to come down from heaven by the words of his mouth? See, which is a spiritual intercession with the Most High, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. So destruction starts with the words of our mouth, speaking the will of the Heavenly Father. His word, which is the law. Let's close out here. The beloved brother Andre serving you, Psalms 44, verse 6. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Thou hast saved us from our enemies and hast put them to shame that hated us. So they're going to be put to shame by the fiery flame. So this is the reading with spiritual comprehension. Yes, we still have natural earthquakes. Yes, we still have natural pestilence. Yes, we still have wars. But the distinguishing feature 
of the end of times is the technology, the technological advantage. That's the distinguishing mark, which leads to the C hit, the MOTB. That's the major sign and prophecy of the end of times. See, let's get one more. So whenever you get a marker, we've always had wars. We've always had disease. We've always had earthquakes. We've always had, see, when they do that, that's when we go to the sea hip, the distinguishing marker. Second Ezra 9. So without understanding this key end time prophecy, we get stumped. We get confused and confounded. Second Ezra 9, second, <laughs> second Ezra 9 and 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, sign, time. Read that in Matthew 24. Tell us, when shall the end come and what shall be the sign of thy coming? So the major sign is the technological advances, which is going to be pushed or ushered in with the global mandatory implanted or the mark. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, somebody put that, I will stand upon my watch. So Habakkuk talked about these last day's events. I will stand upon my watch and will wait to see. See? Then, what? Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So Esau is the end of this time frame, this alarm clock. See, then shall that man of sin be revealed. See how this thing comes together? Reading with spiritual comprehension. See? So we got to wait for the alarm clock, the man of sin being revealed, the mandatory universal implementation of the mark of this man, his system. Brother Gabar Adama and Brother Andre serving Yahweh Shai, Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that read of it. So this is a, a global communications tower or network, the unicorn. It's still called a unicorn and a communications tower today. So we're standing upon this information highway and teaching, preaching, the outer firmament. See, watch this. Second Ezra 9, verse 2. Then shall thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world. There's always been uproars. There's always been earthquakes. So the distinguishing feature is the technology, which culminates with the massive mandates of this man's, you know what, his penetrating device. So that is the difference maker the line in the sand, to be able to make the distinction of the end of days versus other historical events. Then 
shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. The Most High has showed us the culminating events. The Most High has showed us the end from the beginning. The Most High has showed us the technocracy. The Most High has showed us the emergence of the revised Roman Empire, the beast, and the dragon, his military might, that gave him his seat, his authority, his signs, his wonders. So he backs up his mouth speaking great swelling words with his sword, his military might, his power, reinforced with signs and wonders. Second Andrew 9, verse 4. Then shall thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Technology, the signs, the wonders. So he's using left-hand side magic. Now, the prophets, if they saw a man walk that could not walk or that did not have reg regular legs, they would call it sorcery or enchantment to make somebody see that could not see. The prophets would have called this sorcery or magic. See? <coughs> so they're using left-hand side wizardry. Even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs and endings and effects and signs. See? So the prophets would have called it sorcery and would have called Esau, Edom, a warlock, the Chaldeans, the Magi. See? But the elect are going to be preserved and saved from this damn devil. Brother Andre serving Yahavashai. That is who this is talking about in Numbers 23 and 23. The anointed of the Lord that has his covering, a protective hedge. Numbers 23 and 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob, and of Israel, what have the Most High wrought? So they, these things are not going to work on the Lord's elect. And they're not going to bow down to this man's New World Order system. Brother Chazak Ban Yahawra, Sirach 39 and 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof, will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. See? So the elect are meditating day and night on the word, not looking at booty-shaking videos on TikTok all day. Or other news events, we can browse through these things, but not make it a religion or our sole purpose. The scriptures are the backdrop of these events and signs and times. To bounce against the scriptures, what happening, what's happening real time. So the scripture is the measuring tool, the measuring apparatus to bounce these events off of. That way we know where we are in Bible prophecy. We need the Bible to validate the events. Not the other way around. 
the events don't validate the Bible. That's crazy. There are some out there that's only focused on the events, but not looking at the measuring tape as a wise master builder, which is the Bible, the rod of correction and the standards of truth, morality, and events. Yep, let's get this one more. Brother Chazak Ban Yahawda, Psalms 55 and 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. So we don't have to worry about not being able to buy or sell unless we get this man's rod penetrating our skin. The Lord is going to sustain his anointed ones, his elect. Brother Chazak Ban Yahawda, Psalms 55 and 23. But thou, O God, shall bring them down into the pit of destruction. Bloody and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in thee. So the caveman is going to lose, along with the two-third gorillas that's following this man, that trust on his medicine his technology, his technocracy, that fear his military, that fear his authority over the Most High. Brother Gambara Dama said, as a carpenter, you measure twice and you cut once. Exactly. So the, the, the rod of measurement or the measure of morality and universal rule of law is the Holy Scriptures, a Holy Bible. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kadash. Reading the Bible with spiritual comprehension. Shalom, beloved, humble servant. See, so hopefully this was clear and not discombobulated or confusion, confusing. So we're living in some interesting times. Oh, also Ezekiel 37, by the way, that's another major sign. The valley of the dry bones of the Lord's elect waking up in mass number around the world. So everything working together in a synergy shows where we are in the last days with the technocracy being the cream on top with the cherry being that sea hit. That's the final culminating trying event, the test that's going to come upon the entire world. So we have to take all these events together to know that we're in the last days and nuclear war is at the back door being threatened in the last days by Gog and Magog, the feet of the bear, the clash against the Ten Toes or the European Union and NATO, spoken of in Daniel chapter 2. So we're at the end when we measure the times based off of prophetic events and earthquakes of biblical proportion along with these wars that are going to escalate to a nuclear level magnitude. This is how we know where we are. But the key, the key events are the man-made catastrophic events. EMP, HARP, DARPA, biowarfare. See, these are the four horses of the apocalypse. The four horses or the four horsemen of the apocalypse. That's how we know where we are for you mockers and scoffers. Man-made catastrophic events that are being propagated by that man of sin, the son of perdition. That's the key to put it all together. The man of sin is fomenting change on a global scale from the left-hand side, under a spiritual demon, Satan. 
or rock a thumb. Shalom. You mockers and scoffers are running out of ammunition, along with vocab, bloody scab, Malone. Vocab, bloody scab, Malone. And you are the two thirds. You're running out of ammunition. And you're running out of a place to hide. The most high is flooding your hiding places with a flood of truth, a devouring scourge. Tabernacle of David is being raised up from the ashes, from the graves, and from the dust of confusion. We got next, Lord willing, Palm Yasharala, Palm Yasharala, Palm Yasharala, and Abad Babal, Barakatham, Shalom.